What's going on everybody? Today we are starting a new mini series here on the channel where I'm going to be going in depth on everything Football Manager. It's going to be a refresher for the veterans of FM and for you newcomers as there are plenty of you who either play on console or have gotten the game for free in recent months. This is for you guys. We are going over everything that you could possibly be asking about, whether it is staff, tactics, recruitment, all of it, especially training, and everything gets its own video. However, today being the first episode, we're going to go over everything day one of the save. So when you load up, you get to that inbox screen, everything that you need to make sure you have done on day one of your save, that's what we got here today. Before we do get into things, the club that we'll be using for this mini series is AFC Ajax. I put a poll out here on YouTube. It was between the Netherlands as well as Portugal, which for those of you that voted on the poll, you didn't know I already had the clubs picked out. It was between Ajax and Benfica and the Netherlands ended up winning as you guys can see on screen right now. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get in to everything day one in FM. So, once you have picked your club, loaded up the save, gone through all the little pop-ups that first come up for you, this is where you land, the inbox screen. And it essentially just gives you a, a little kind of article on you becoming the manager of the club you're at. However, you also have these over here that you got to deal with in your inbox. The main thing is season expectations. This is a very short overview of what your board is going to be expecting of you. Now, essentially, you just got to confirm that and everything is all good. The reason being you have to confirm it is because if you wish to move around your transfer budget and wage budget, you can't do so until you confirm that. We then also have an alert on players whose contracts are expiring this season. This gives you a short little overview of what players you are going to either have to sell, sign to new contracts, or be prepared to let them leave on a free. We also have the tactical direction required right here. So essentially you just got to go create a tactic which, for right now, being that the tactics is going to be its own episode as a whole, I'm just going to load up one of my tactics, and boom, pow, there we go. We could go play a game if we wanted to. However, that is now what we're doing. We're going to go over how I approach day one within a save. What do I do first? Where do I go first? First place I honestly go is the club info screen. Why do I go to the club info screen? One. I always want to see what stadium I'm playing at, but two, it gives me a brief overview of everything that I may need to know. It allows me to see the kits. It allows me to know what our reputation is. So players that we could potentially go out for or what our training facilities are, how good our youth recruitment is, as well as who our key player is and hot prospect, which are all important things. But after that, I go to the next most important area, and that is where all of our players are at least first team players that is i go to the squad and i kind of analyze and go over all right who are the best players who are our players for the future who do i want to sell who do i want to loan off the rip i notice immediately who our best players are they're highlighted on screen for you currently and one of them is loney danielle rugani now being that he is a loan definitely going to have to sort out a long-term replacement for him as he is only going to be here for a season and he is immediately one of our best players. Thankfully though, upon sorting by potential, I can see I already have a center back that will be able to fill that void of Mr. Jarrell Hato as he has incredible potential along with a couple of other players. So being that we have some players out on loan currently, I went ahead and sorted the squad to where those players are taken out and now we can only see who is here permanently plus who is here on a loan, AKA Mr. Rugani. So when looking at the face of things, anyone from Renko Pasvir on up, those are going to be some of our best players right there. Now, anyone below Renko, these are either squad and bench options or players I'm going to be looking to loan out. But when it comes to these players to loan out, it's mainly going to be down to, okay, how much playing time do I see them getting? 
What is their potential like? And would they benefit more by staying at the club or wanting them out to get playing time and develop further? And I know right away, Ken Fitzjim and Christian Nokvi Klinsen, those two I am going to be loaning out because I don't see them getting in over some of the other players that I'm going to be playing, as well as I want to make sure that they're developing either for the future to be big time impact players for us or to where we can sell them on for a pretty decent fee in the future. And speaking of those big time fees in the future, it is important to know who your most valuable players are. So when I sort by transfer value, we see that Drill Hato, who is going to be one of the key pieces of our future, especially once Rugani is gone, he is going to be one of the more valuable pieces that we have, especially Divine Wrench as well. Kenneth Taylor, but we see that Mr. Joseph Sutalo, who's valued between 17 and a half to 21 million pounds, he is currently wanted by Tottenham as well as Inter Milan. So we will have to keep an eye on that, especially during the recruitment video to make sure that, okay, if we want to sell him, we can, we'll get a decent fee, but is it worth it right now? Because he is one of our better players. And speaking of recruitment, we always need to be thinking one step ahead. Are we going to be losing some players either on loans? Are we going to lose people on permanent transfers away? How are we going to be able to replace those players? Well, the next place that I am looking at immediately after analyzing my squad is the development center, where all of our youth is, our B team, as well as our U18s. These are the players that are basically a majority homegrown players. Those players that you're going to be able to develop in your B team and U18s along with giving them time with your first team to eventually replace some players or take over other players' jobs. And immediately we can see with Jane Bunnell as well as Van Axeldongen, those two are pretty close to being able to being called up to the first team to get some playing time if I wish to do so. However, they have some pretty high potential. They're also both 19 years of age. Do I see them getting more playing time in the first team coming off the bench? or loaned out and gaining experience. Probably that loan route. However, when looking at things further with the B team, those are the only two that could potentially come up and make any impact immediately in the first team, whether it be off the bench or putting them in to a game with the starting 11. Everyone below them still needs a little bit more time to develop either in the B team or out on loans. And when sorting by potential, we have a boatload of high potential players. I mean, we have three potential five-star players. So we definitely need to make sure that we are doing what is best for them development-wise if we want them to hit the top of their game. And being that I was talking about transfers and whatnot a little bit ago, the next place that I go to is our finances. How are we looking financially? Are we pretty healthy? Are we looking like Barcelona? Or are we going to be the next Bordeaux? Thankfully, we are pretty healthy with 89 million pounds in the balance. We also have a pretty hefty transfer budget of 30 million pounds, and we are not in the red with the wage budget. However, we are at our cap with the wage budget. So if we wish to make any signings, we would go over what we are currently spending, which like I said, is already at the cap. So one place that I go to look at to potentially bolster our financial situation is our clauses. Where do you find clauses? In the transfer section. So you go to the transfer section, go to clauses, and I sort by in because this is the money that we can bring in. The out is obviously the money going out. So on the ends, we have a clause with Mr. Mohamed Kudis as well as Per Schurz, and Urian Timber has some as well. Now we can sell all these and get this money right now, or we can wait and hopefully get the full amount when these players hit whatever threshold they need to. For example, Mohamed Kudus right here at West Ham United. We would get 10% of the profit on his next sale. Now they signed him for 35.5 million. His value is now at 51 to 77 million. So that would be a pretty decent chunk of change or 
we can sell it right now for 1.4 million if we wish to have that added into the bank which if we did we could obviously put into the wages to help bolster that a little bit but for right now not going to be selling those clauses and what instead we're going to do thanks to us accepting the current vision and expectations we can go ahead and make an adjustment to the transfer budget and wage budget and i'm just going to knock that down by two notches so we have plenty of money to work with still in the transfer budget and we have almost 70,000 extra in the wage budget now. Which being that we're not a Premier League club, that actually goes a long ways because not everyone coming to the Dutch League is going to want 100k a week. And speaking of the club vision and expectations, that is where I usually go next. What am I kind of being required to adhere to in at least the first season at our club? They want us to challenge for the league title and they want us to reach the knockout stages of the Europa Conference League. Both, I think, are very doable, especially with the amount that we currently have in the transfer budget, because thanks to that, we can bring in some reinforcements and help make the team even stronger. However, you'll notice those are the board expectations, and for those of you that haven't played FM in a little while or are new to FM, there is also supporters' expectations as well, which I absolutely love. And the supporters it's very different than what the board wants because the supporters are the ones watching the games they want to be entertained hence they desire importance wise to have entertaining football and attacking football both we can do however they also want us to use the use system to develop our players which already talked about that already and that's going to be a major focus for us they also want us to maintain the status as the most reputable team in the Netherlands, which that is required. So it's required, desired, preferred, and then I forgot what the last one was because I don't really see that a whole lot. But if it's required and you do not meet that standard, that has a drastic effect on the grade that you will get from the supporters and or the board. Now, if it's desired, it's not going to be as much of an impact. It's still pretty important preferred that middle of the road and then obviously that bottom one it is eh we're not too upset about it but they also want us to finish above Feyenoord in the league and challenge for the title so supporters and board are both on the same page in the sense that they want us challenging for the title which both as we can see are required so if we aren't challenging for that title we can kiss our job here at Ajax goodbye Next thing that I go to is competitions. What competitions am I going to be in with my club? Well, we're going to be in the league, the Europa Conference League, as well as the Dutch Cup. The main reason why I go to the competition screen is because I want to see rule-wise what are registration rules, what are financial rules, what are we expected to do building our teams, what kind of restrictions do we have. Thankfully, we don't have all that much. However, wage rule-wise, there is a minimum that we have to pay certain either age levels or even if they are non-EU players, meaning non-European Union. And another thing I always make sure to look at is what type of prize money are we going to be getting from the league that we are currently in? Now, some leagues obviously have way more prize money than others. Obviously, the Premier League is going to have way more money than the Eredivisie, the Dutch League. And if we are to win the league, we get 6.8 million pounds. However, if we are to be relegated, we get 3 million pounds. So definitely want to be aiming to win the league, obviously. And what can help you win leagues? Your staff can, and that is where I head to next. Where do I have to fill in positionally with our staff? Do I have to do a complete overhaul? Do I only have to plug in a few gaps here and there? We have to do a complete overhaul with Ajax. Now, being that I have the updated databases, it has some of them filled. However, for the staff video, I will be releasing everyone like it usually is with Ajax so that we build the staff from the ground up and have our own influence on how the staff is shaped and how they're going to help us in the future with developing our players as well as being the best club that we could possibly be now after the staff i head to the tactics already kind of touched on tactics they're getting their own video but after i've kind of gone over everything that is when i try and start molding my vision of all right how do i exactly want to play with the side and being that it's ix i know historically speaking 
it's usually 433s or 4231s. So if I want to stay historically accurate, that's basically what we're probably going to be playing going forward. And after I have a vision of how I want us to set up tactically, I go to the scouting. And thankfully to us having a pretty decent amount in the transfer budget, and now wage budget as well, we're going to be able to sign some players. Now, we don't have any scouts. So I would have to do everything manually, like going to the players in range. And then obviously this is everyone that is interested in playing for us. If I tick off... Obviously, we'll have Lionel Messi and other people pop up, but we're only going to be interested in players that are interested in playing at Ajax. And when I end up going to scouting, I usually try and put together a short list. Right now, I currently do not have one made up. However, what I would do next is look for some targets. Look for some players that I want to make sure, okay, this is one of those top guys that I would want to be aiming for. So, as examples, I went ahead and put together a kind of short four player short list. If I were to be looking for some free signings, Anthony Martial is definitely a player that I would look to be bringing in because he's on a free, which means free is affordable. Also, he is pretty darn good in football manager, so why not bring him in? Then for me personally, I think from the loss of Mohamed Kudis that they need a new number 10 that can also play wide from time to time. So I made sure to include two targets for here as well. One in Martin Baterina, who is a young Croatian that can play as a number 10 or centrally in central midfield. And the other is Marts Kyergaard, who can do the exact same thing as Martin Baterina, except I know for a fact he will be much better at striker even though he does lack finishing. And speaking of striker, I know that they can use some reinforcement up there as well, so why not put one on the list for the future and Mr. Kareem Konate, who is very pacey and very, very good. And being that we have talked about scouting, transfers, as well as transfer targets, obviously we also need to cover loans a little bit as well. Now, loan-wise, it's who are we going to be loaning out? for development purposes, of course, and to make sure that they get first team playing time and aren't kicking up a hissy fit. A majority of those are going to be players that are in the B team as well as the U18s to where we can get them some playing time to further their development and make sure that we aren't stagnating them by leaving them here at the club and they aren't getting the first team time that they need. But that is it for the first episode of the process here with Ajax. So the next episode is going to be covering staff and how to kind of build an elite staff to not only help you develop your players, but lead your team onto a dynasty in the future. Now that episode will be coming out on Wednesday. So make sure to leave a like, comment and subscribe. Subscribing is 100% free, so why not hit that sub button and hit that notification bell so you guys get notified when the next video in this series is released here on the channel. Until next time, everyone, have a good one. Bye-bye.